Hi, Dr. Carrero. Good afternoon. I'm Isha, a high school student who is interested in being a veterinarian. I'm excited to introduce our speaker today, Dr. Nino Carrero, a full-time faculty member at University of Massachusetts Amherst. Dr. Carrero grew up in southeastern Massachusetts and began his animal science studies while attending Bristol County Agricultural High School. After high school, his interest in horses led him to attend the Stockbridge School of Agricultural Equine Studies program. He completed the pre-vet curriculum through the Animal Science Department and earned a Bachelor of Science degree from the University of Massachusetts Amherst. He did research during the bachelor's and master's program, completed his doctor of veterinary medicine degree from Colorado State University, and was chosen to participate in the Mor Morale Veterinary Scholars Program based on his interest in research. He worked for seven years at a mixed animal practice team in Virginia, providing veterinary care, care to the world famous Shinkatik ponies located on the Shinkatik National Wildlife Refuge, and then at a multi doctor small animal practice in Massachusetts. He's equally passionate about veterinary medicine and teaching, and his full-time faculty member role at UMass Amherst allows him to seamlessly blend these. He enjoys working with students, fostering a positive learning environment, and advising them about the many opportunities in the fields of veterinary and animal science. Dr. Carrero, I'm very happy to see you again, and really excited to welcome you to the interview series on the careers of veterinarians. Thank you so much for chatting with me. Thank you, Isha. It's nice to see you again, and I really appreciate the invite. Looking forward to our time together today. So first, could you tell us about your education and training that prepared you for this remarkable career, how it helped you, what were the prerequisites, where did you study, any influential mentors, and how your career evolved over time, including any skills and experience that you learned during your fascinating journey? It'll be my pleasure, Isha. Um, let me just share my, my PowerPoint slide here. So thank you. Thanks again for having me on, Isha. And to answer your question, um, I began, as you said, my studies at the University of Massachusetts in the Stockbridge School of Agriculture. At the time, they had a two-year program in equine industries, and I had a real passion for horses, so that's where I started. And then I stayed at UMass, um, transferred to their four-year uh, Bachelor of Science program. In, in animal science with a pre-vet concentration. And I liked it at UMass so much, I stayed for another uh, year, uh, finishing up my master of science degree in immunology, and then went on to Colorado State University for my doctor of veterinary medicine degree. Um, and as far as like how my career evolved, evolved and how my education evolved, um, while at UMass, I had an opportunity to do research, undergraduate research um, in Dr. Baldwin's lab. And she's a professor that at the time was investigating um, gamma delta T cells and how they respond to certain diseases. So my point of bringing this up is that I would encourage any college students, undergraduate students that are thinking about going to vet school by taking advantage of the resources that your uh, college or university has to offer. And that might be a really great research program like we have here at UMass. So Dr. Baldwin was the lead scientist or head of the lab where I approached her and asked her um, if I could work in her lab. And she had an undergraduate position, which allowed me to work under a graduate student. And so during that time, I learned lots of great skills um, while working in the lab, you know, anything from how to properly use a microscope, how to do PCR, how to do cell culture. And some of these skills I went on to use for my master's degree. But by making that connection early, and this is something I would recommend for your pre-vet um, college students, is that if you're interested in gathering more research experience as you build your veterinary school application portfolio, I would encourage you to go to your 
professors early on in your career. So maybe after your freshman year um, and, and ask if you could join their lab. A lot of professors prefer that you go early so that they have time to train you so that you can be um, a good resource for their lab and there's enough time to train you and be productive in the lab. So while I was in Dr. Baldwin's lab, again, I her work was immunology uh, related. So we were studying the response of gamma delta T cells to different pathogens. And I learned a lot of molecular biology techniques. But it was through that connection um, that I then met, um, well, I had, I had the opportunity to actually publish a paper before I graduated with my undergraduate degree, uh, which again, it's a great opportunity. It's a great way to set yourself apart from other vet school applicants. So um, even if you're thinking, I don't know if I want to do research, I always um, tell my students, you know, give it a chance. You know, part of what the vet school admissions um, committee is looking for is diversity in your experiences. Like, do you understand the role that veterinarians play, not just in private practice, but also in government? And there's lots of veterinarians that are involved in research in one way or another. So the more varied experiences that you can that you can gain, I think I think the better. Um, so it was through Dr. Baldwin's lab that I got to meet Dr. Black. And uh, once I finished my undergraduate degree, Dr. Black invited me to come and do a master's degree in his laboratory. So that's another piece of advice that I tell students is like, don't close doors. Um, sometimes you just have to realize, you know, an opportunity when you see it, uh, take a chance. You never know where it's going to lead you to it. Um, while I was in Dr. Black's lab, I studied African trypanosomiasis, which is a parasitic, it's a, it's a blood parasite that affects not only cattle, um, but also people. Um, just a little bit of information of life as a grad student versus uh, a veterinary student. It's, it's very different. Uh, graduate school, when you're working on a master's degree or a PhD versus uh, graduate school as in veterinary school. As a graduate student at UMass, I spent time taking advanced coursework, spent time, about a third of my time in the laboratory, doing the research, and then a third of my time communicating um, the work that we're doing in the lab. So you can kind of put, put life as a grad student into kind of these three big buckets. Some of the advanced coursework that I took was like, you know, graduate level immunology, virology, microbiology, and then uh, research, um, all these techniques, molecular biology techniques, uh, PCR, cell culture, how to maintain the lab, um, how to use the microscope, different types of microscopes. These were all great skills that I learned along the way, along with the great skill of communicating. So that meant presenting my work in a journal club, at conferences, and how to write papers, how to write um, a thesis. So I think the skills that you gained, that I gained as a master's student uh, also really helped to um, with my skills as, as a veterinarian in private practice. So just real quick, my experience led me to study African trypanosomiasis. This disease affects 36 countries, mostly in Sub-Saharan Africa. Um, and I really became interested in infectious disease at this point. Um, and that passion really followed me through vet school and even till now as, as a professor at UMass. Uh, African trypanosomiasis threatens the health of 60 million people and 50 million head of cattle in sub-Saharan Africa. And, and, and you can see it on the map here, um, some of the area, like the, the colored areas right in the middle of Africa here are some of the areas where it's really hard to raise cattle because of this disease. So if we could eliminate or have um, a treatment for this disease, there could be a lot more cattle being raised in Sub-Saharan Africa, which of course will help the economy, will help the well-being of people. And that's something that really interested me um, when I was working in this lab. Um, 
when I graduated from UMass with my master's degree, I went to Colorado State. I attended Colorado State University for my um, uh, doctor of veterinary medicine. And uh, after four years, graduated, went into general practice. First, um, mixed animal practice, as you mentioned, uh, down in Virginia. Um, on the Del Marva Peninsula. So as you can see here on the map, not many people know what Del Marva is or um, it's kind of away from the mainland of Virginia, but where you see the red circle is where I practiced on that peninsula. Did mixed animal practice, um, then moved back to Massachusetts, practiced for another year before I decided I really wanted to try something else in the profession and transition to academia. First teaching at Becker College as a full-time faculty member. Um, Becker College also had a uh, small animal clinic, so I still got the practice with my main duty as teaching surgery and anesthesia. And then eventually um, transitioned to the position that I have now at UMass as a, a lecturer in, in veterinary and animal science. Um, in my current role at UMass, I can kind of put my role into these four different buckets, which is I'm a teaching faculty. So my main role is to teach uh, different courses, uh, lab animal management being one. I also teach a course on One Health. So that's uh, One Health is the interaction between people, animals, and the environment. Um, I help teach introductory animal science laboratories, but I also have different hats that I wear in my current role. I'm an academic advisor, so I help students with career advising, course registration, and um, I'm just like a general resource for students at UMass. Uh, that includes just about anything that you need help with. Students can come to my office hours and I, and I help them out. Uh, I'm also the NISA advisor, which is a, a livestock judging team at UMass. So um, it's a student run club. They do most of the work. I'm there to advise and help them connect them with resources on campus and with administrators. And I just help to ensure the future success of that club. And then I'm also a clinical veterinarian. So I assist with animal care as needed, um, different areas of, of the college. Uh, I also collaborate with UMass researchers. So if they need some something that I can help them with, um, I'm also collaborating with them. This is just a snapshot of the courses that I teach. So introduction to animal science, small animal nursing, and then laboratory animal management courses, and then the One Health class, um, uh, which um, I developed on my own because of my interest in One Health. And I know you had Dr. Deborah Thompson on before. so. Uh, for those of you not sure what One Health is, I highly recommend that you watch the episode that Isha has with uh, Dr. Thompson. Yes. Thank you for sharing all about your career evolution and the work that you do currently. That was super helpful. Could you now share about the UMass pre-vet program, perhaps what to look for in a pre-vet program like yours? the prerequisites for pre-vet and vet school and what you study in a pre-vet program to prepare for vet school? Yes, absolutely. I can do that. Um, go ahead and share my screen again. And I, I can start by saying that UMass offers um, three majors in our department, which is veterinary and animal science. So we have three majors, animal science, pre-veterinary science, and veterinary technology. Now, a lot of schools have pre-vet programs, that, but they're not necessarily a major. There may be a track or a concentration, but not necessarily a major. At UMass, pre-vet science is a major. However, if you wanna be a pre-vet student at UMass, you don't come in as a pre-vet student right away. You can choose to be an animal science student, and within animal science, there are three concentrations uh, at UMass. What a concentration is, is basically um, there's five or six courses that you take in your junior and your senior year that are specifically focused on these topics. 
So if you're an animal management concentration, you focus more on the management aspect of animals, different species that we may have at the farm, uh, like goats, sheep, um, and beef cows, for example. But we also have a biotechnology and research concentration. And if you're someone that really wants to know and learn more about horses, then we have an equine science concentration. Um, we also have a veterinary technology major, uh, which the curriculum is very similar to animal science in the first couple of years. Um, but then in the, in the junior and senior year of veterinary technology, it becomes a little more clinical, a lot more clinical, I should say. So um, this is the pathways to, to graduation and careers at UMass. So your first year, if you want to apply to UMass, you're, you're either going to start off as animal science and, or veterinary technology. Uh, the vet tech program is accredited by the American Veterinary Medical Association. And we do have um, a, a separate campus. Uh, so in your uh, junior and senior year, you would be at the Mount Ida campus doing your clinical work. Um, and students that choose to be in the vet tech program, they graduate and are able to um, uh, take the national board exam and to become a certified veterinary technologist. And there's a high demand for veterinary technologists. So there tends to be 100% career placement right after graduation. If you come in as animal science, then at first you choose one of your concentrations. And then in your third year, you start to take those five to six courses to specialize in your concentration. Now, if you want to be a pre-vet student at UMass, um, you have to qualify for that major. This is what we call uh, uh, pre-vet. The pre-vet major is what we call a, a closed major. So you actually have to apply and qualify to become a pre-vet major at UMass. Typically, that happens uh, by the end of your second year. At the end of your second year, you've taken you've taken a bunch of prerequisite courses, and as long as you get an, a, a, like a a B average or higher, then you automatically qualify for the pre vet major, and then it's as easy as you know um, switching over from animal science to pre vet. So what you need is a. a a 2.7 GPA or higher in 10 courses in those animal science courses that you'll take in your first couple of years at UMass. And if you do that, then you can go ahead and transition to the pre-vet major, which the pre-vet degree, the pre-vet major is meant to, as a pre-professional major, it's meant to prepare students that are interested in applying not only to veterinary medical school, but also graduate school. So for example, if you decide along the way that you wanna do a master's degree or a PhD, that degree would also prepare you for that. Or other professional schools, it could be medical school. Um, we've had students go on to become physician's assistants or go on to nursing school. So I think I would like students to understand that the pre-vet major is not, you know, it's not pre-vet and then vet school automatically, it's, it's a pre-professional program that can really prepare you for lots of careers. So what are the courses that you would be taking at UMass? Um, so as animal science, a pre-vet student, or even vet tech student, uh, you're basically taking a lot of the same courses your first couple of years. These are the foundational courses that you need. Uh, animal science 101 and 103, these are just introductory animal science and management courses. Uh, if you are in the vet tech program, instead of taking the animal science 101 and 103 management courses, you would be taking animal science 105, 115 and 125, which is basically geared towards veterinary technology or veterinary nursing. But all these other courses you would have to take, everyone takes some um, introduction to biology. So biology 151, 52 and 53. Uh, general chemistry, anatomy and physiology, uh, animal care and welfare, cellular and molecular biology, organic chemistry. Um, this may be what your first semester at UMass would be, whether as an animal science student or pre-vet student. Um, this is what it would it look like. It's animal science 101, biology 151, chemistry 111, 
um, college writing or a general education requirement totaling about 14 to 16 credits. And one question I get a lot from students is, when do we get to handle animals? And at UMass, because we have Animal Science 101 right in the first semester, uh, that course takes you to our, uh, our, our farm, basically. And you get to handle animals right in your first semester. Yeah, wow. Thank you for, oh, sorry, let me, you can continue. Um, uh, it's okay. And I was just going to say that um, the pre-veterinary science major is very rigorous. Um, so this is why we make it so that students have to apply and qualify for the pre-vet major, because we want to make sure that you're successful when applying to vet school. Um, so again, GPA of 2.7 or higher in the following courses in order to apply to the pre-vet program at UMass. Yeah, thank you for sharing um, that. That was super helpful and I've learned so much. Do you know if UMass has any educational programs in the summer or online for high school students that are interested in becoming veterinarians? Um, yes, they do. So um, UMass runs several um, pre-college programs across different departments. So our department, we actually have a pre-college program in equine science, in veterinary technology, and we also have a pre-vet medicine pre-college program. So I can share that website with you um, and for your viewers. So you can go to University of Massachusetts, um, pre-college at UMass. And you can see there's a pre-vet medicine program, which um, it tends to fill up quite quickly every summer. So recommend registering fairly early. And the objective of the program is to introduce students to the profession. So we talk about some basic veterinary terminology, some basic anatomy and physiology. It is hands-on. Um, you spend time at the farm on campus. And so, um, you know, we ask students to be prepared for that, to be to be on a farm. So make sure you have the right equipment, uh, the right clothing, and be ready to, to, to get dirty and, and, and handle the animals. So it's a two-week pre-college program. You get to see, uh, you get to experience what college, is life, uh, college life is like. And we also give you lots of information of how to prepare, not only for your undergraduate career, but what the profession is about and how to prepare for applying to vet school. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, could you kindly share about the most rewarding aspects of your career? Boy, there's been many. As you saw, like I, I've had to transition from, you know, graduating from vet school to private practice and then academia. And, and each time there's been different rewards, um, rewarding aspects of it. So when I was in private practice, I think the most rewarding thing was the relationships I built with clients and their animals, you know, just being the family vet basically, which as a general practitioner, that's how I view myself. I'm the family vet. So I got to meet the family, seeing new additions to the family, whether it's a new baby born or they got a new puppy, a new kitten. And I really like establishing those relationships as a general practitioner. Of course, now in academia as a professor, um, uh, it's, a, it's a bit different. Um, I think the rewarding part is just helping undergraduate students kind of figure out their own path. Everyone is so different um, and everybody's gonna be taking a different path and just, just being there to advise and, and guide students, that's the most rewarding thing that I get. I just see so much growth from when a student comes in in their first year to when they graduate. It's so much professional uh, and personal growth. And it's just amazing to see when they graduate, um, what they go off and do, which could be many different things. Right, that's amazing. That's very inspirational. Um, which has been more valuable in your career, your education or your experience? 
Um, I would say, uh, I mean, maybe it's this is a cop out because I'm not going to really choose one. I'm going to say you really have to blend the two. Uh, you know, it's your education is foundational. You have to have it. But at the same, it's like building blocks, education, experience, education, experience. It really gets all blended. Um, and as a veterinarian, you're committed to lifelong learning. So you never stop learning. So your education is, is lifelong. Even after you graduate, uh, veterinarians have to keep up with continuing education, right? In order to keep my license, but also for my professional well-being, I have to keep up with continuing education. Um, and of course, as a veterinarian, you when you graduate from vet school, you are equipped to, you know, go off in all these different directions. Um, but really, the kind of veterinarian that you want to be, to me, really starts right after graduation. Um, and so you have to build on the experience experiences from vet school once you graduate. So I'll give you an example. Like when I started vet school, I thought I wanted to be a board certified veterinary surgeon, right? And along the way, I found out more about myself and decided that I really like doing lots of different things. And that's what I like about general practice is that it didn't, it just, I could, I could still do surgery. Um, and I still enjoy surgery, but I also like seeing the puppy vaccine appointments. I still like to go on farm calls. Um, but because of my surgery interests, I did continuing education to further my surgical skills. And so that's what I mean about compounding education and experience. Those both go together in their lifelong. Yeah, that's a very great point. Thank you for sharing that. How do you think that the veterinary profession has changed during the span of your career and how have you and other successful professionals adapted to this? Boy, there's a lot going on um, in, in, in our profession right now. Um, certainly one of the biggest changes, I think, especially when it comes to private practice is corporate veterinary medicine. Right. For a long time, it used to be private practice was owned, you know, by one veterinarian and they ran that private practice and then practices became bigger. Right. So maybe there was co-owners or a group of owners, but still private. Uh, but now there's also corporate veterinary medicine where there's these big corporations that are buying veterinary practices. And I think that's changing the landscape of veterinary medicine. Maybe some for the good, maybe some for not so great of what we're used to and things are changing. So I think veterinarians have had to adapt um, to that. You know, I think it's a big challenge for a new graduate to um, start a practice. You know, maybe 20, 30 years ago, it was much easier to start your own practice than it is now. Not impossible, but I think it's a it's a changing landscape. Um, so as veterinarians, we also we always have to be adapting, and that's just one thing we're adapting to. Um, so that's definitely one thing that's changed. Another thing is um, pet insurance. Um, I think it's becoming bigger and bigger in our profession. So we have to adapt. How do we incorporate parent pet insurance into the care that we provide? Yeah. That's that's very interesting. Thank you. Um, based on your experience working with students, what are the common mistakes that you see pre-vet or veterinary students make? Boy, um, I think one thing that specifically pre-vet students uh, tend to gravitate towards is they tend to pre-specialize too early. You know, I, I talk to pre-vet students all the time and they say, well, I just want to be a small animal vet or I just want to work with dairy cows or I just want to do X. And I'm always encouraging students to, this is a time in your career where you should be as um, uh, wide open to new experiences and opportunities as possible. That may be so. You may end up working just in small animal practice, but while you're in your undergraduate career and even vet school, you know, explore 
different aspects of the profession because you never know what's really going to interest you and where it's going to take you. Um, like I said, I thought I wanted to be a, a small animal surgeon. Um, but, you know, through these different experiences, it took me in a different path. And so I always encourage students to keep an open mind. So besides just being stuck pre-specializing too early. Yeah, that's great advice. Um, based on your expertise and experience, what are some factors to consider when choosing which pre-vet or vet school to apply to? Well, as far as the, yeah, a, a pre-vet program and vet school, so two different things. Let me start with just like a pre-vet program. Just like any undergraduate institution that you're looking at, I think, um, you know, it's, you don't have to be a specific major to go to vet school. Um, however, I think there there are advantages of attending a school with a pre-vet program, uh, especially if you have no animal experience, uh, you should be able to get that animal experience with a, with a pre-vet program. So like at UMass, we have two farms, two working farms with a variety of species of animals. Uh, of course, we also have a science, a strong science curriculum. So, but no matter where you attend, you want your undergraduate institution to have strong science curriculum. You wanna be comfortable where you are. So are you more comfortable at a small college? Are you okay being at a big university? Um, one thing that I will say is, even though our program is at a big university, our department is actually fairly small. So we always say UMass is as big or as small as you want it to feel, but you have to feel comfortable wherever you go. So think about the size of the school that you're going to, uh, think about the curriculum, think about the resources. Um, in our pre-vet program, you have uh, veterinarians and pre-veterinary advisors at your disposal. Whereas other programs, they may have a pre-vet track, but you know, are the advisors, how experienced are the advisors in advising students to apply to vet school? I think you have to look at that too. Yeah, right. Thank you. Um, do you, uh, is there anything else that you would like to share with anyone watching before we close the session? Uh, yes, I think I have a, um, couple of things I just wanted to share about UMass. Um, is a little bit about the student experience. And then um, we have an actual, we, we have an early acceptance program with Tufts University. So I can I can share my screen um, and, sh and share those with you if that's okay. Yes, that's perfect, thank you. So besides the our, our curriculum, um, other student opportunities at UMass is that we have peer mentors program where um, freshman students are paired up with a senior or junior student, and that's to help you transition to college life and you know which classes to take, um, when to take them, um, what you should be doing to get ready to apply to vet school. So peer mentors will help you with that, along with the pre-vet club. The pre-vet club is student run. They meet once a week. And um, again, they focus a lot on preparing for application for um, veterinary school. We have the NISA Livestock Club, um, which is a livestock judging club. So it's a great way to meet people. As you see, it's a, it's a fairly small group. So it's, it's a way to uh, make friends in a small group environment. Um, we travel at least once a year to compete with peer institutions. Uh, think about um, Penn State, UConn, University of Rhode Island, University of Vermont, uh, New Hampshire. Uh, these are our peer institutions. And it's just, we, we travel to, to a host in, institution and, and, and do livestock judging. So it's just fun. We have a writing team and clubs that students can join at UMass. Um, along, don't forget the undergraduate research opportunities. So UMass is really well-established and known for its um, uh, research. Uh, we tend to, our department focuses on immunology research, molecular genetics research, reproduction and development, and toxicology research. Um, but as a student at UMass, you're not limited to just the laboratories 
offered at um, in our department. If if there's another professor in another department that's doing work that is more interesting to you, um, you know you can earn credit by working um, in 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 their laboratory also. Um, just some photos of like what typical laboratory classrooms look like at UMass. You know we have state of the art, um, really well equipped laboratory spaces. Just as some photos of our UMass South Deerfield farm. Um, this is where our beef cattle herd of belted Galloway cows are kept. Um, and then the Hadley farm, which is literally, you can see the farm from campus. It's just at the edge of, edge of campus. Uh, Hadley farm houses, horses, sheep. Uh, we have a poultry program. We have a goat program. And all of these are really student run. Um, a lot of the herds are student run. Uh, one thing I wanted to talk about too is like as a new student, you have lots of support when transitioning to UMass. So we have a new student orientation and transition team that um, if you're accepted to UMass uh, during the summer, you meet with what we call an um, NSO major advisor. And we meet with new students to make sure that they are registered for the right courses, answer any questions that they have about the program. And then you are assigned a permanent advisor uh, when you start in the fall, you'll have that advisor for four years. It's a great way to have one faculty member get to know you really well. And that's another piece of advice that I will, you know, share with um, undergraduate students is get to know your advisor, get to know your professors, uh, because you will need to rely on them uh, for um, vet school recommendation letters. And so the more, the better I know you, the better the letter. So the sooner you get to know your professors, the better. Um, also, UMass has a unique resident academic program for first-year students. Um, they're called RAPS or Residence Academic Programs. Um, this is something that you can sign up as a first-year student. Um, there's an animal science RAP, which means you get housed with other animal science students and you take this one credit seminar course during your fall semester. It's meant to help you transition to college life, make sure you know all the resources available to you on campus. Uh, and it's limited to 19 students per class, which means you get this small class environment to get to know your classmates um, right away. Just some statistics on applying to vet school as a UMass uh, student. Um, you know, about 80 to 90% of first year students plan on applying to veterinary school, um, but about 20 to 38% of them apply at the beginning of senior year. So this is just to show you that a lot of changes, a lot of maturity, a lot of different things happen when you first go, um, come in as an undergraduate to when you become a senior. Um, you know, a lot of students change their mind about going to vet school. And I want to say to to students, that's okay. Uh, I think sometimes students feel pressure to let go of the, the vet school dream because they found something else that really interests them, them more. Maybe they want to do a PhD or a master's degree instead. And that's okay. And that's, um, the numbers reflect that. Students change their mind, but of the students that do apply to vet school, um, UMass students that do apply to vet school, about 95% of them gain admittance to at least one veterinary medical school. And so that just speaks to the strength of our program and how prepared our students are uh, to apply and begin veterinary school. Um, from a UMass student perspective, a competitive vet school application includes at least a GPA of 3.3 to 4.0, most likely closer to like a 3.5 or a 3.6. Excellent GRE scores, although many vet schools no longer are requiring um, GRE scores. So uh, that's becoming less of a requirement. Um, think about those letters of recommendation, one to two letters of recommendation from, from veterinarians, one to two letters typically from a professor, advisor, or someone that knows you professionally. And also think about the 
type of experience that you want to have when applying to vet school. Uh, typically, successful applicants will have at least 600 hours of a diverse veterinary medical related experience. So whether it's small animal, wildlife conservation, large animal or research. And then of course, there's also the vet school essays showing your communication skills, maturity and thought. Um, in some schools may offer you interview and that also plays a part in, in the admissions process, whether it's a traditional interview where a committee interviews one applicant or an MMI interview, which is multiple mini interviews. And instead of GREs, a lot of schools are now requiring the CASPER test. This is a computer-based assessment for sampling personal characteristics. That's what CASPER stands for. Basically, it's a way for them to evaluate your personal and professional characteristics. So think about how do you collaborate with people? How are you collaborating with people, communicating with people? Uh, what's your thoughts on ethics, um, problem solving? What's your motivation? What is your self-awareness? So this is a test that you, you really can't study for, but it's an online computer-based test um, where a lot of vet schools are now taking that into consideration um, when choosing uh, vet school candidates. Lastly, I just want to say that UMass um, has collaboration with Tufts School of Veterinary Medicine in their DVM Early Acceptance Program. So students from UMass Amherst, Tufts University, WPI, which is a university um, in Worcester, and University of Vermont are eligible to apply to this Early Acceptance Program. Um, so students typically in their sophomore year are able to apply, and they're judged uh, basically on their GPA, typically students tend to have a GPA of a 3.8 to a 4.0 to be competitive. Um, Tufts at this point will also look at your SAT scores, take a look at your veterinary medical ex related experiences. So it really helps if you've already been um, working in a vet clinic or at least volunteering in a vet clinic when you're applied to this early acceptance program. Uh, as far as courses, they expect that you've taken at least two semesters of Introduction to Biology and General Chemistry. And typically students apply at the end of their, you know, like mid sophomore year. Um, and Tufts reserves some seats for the students that qualify. qualify. And typically about one to four UMass students are accepted uh, per year. So between the early acceptance program and the regular acceptance program pathways, there's more UMass students attending Tufts than any other from any other college or university. Okay, thank you so much for sharing that. That was super informative and I learned so much. Um, thank you so much for chatting with me today, sharing your remarkable experience as a veterinarian and an educator. It's so inspiring to hear you talk about your career journey, helping so many students and future veterinarians over the years. I wish you continued success in your career. Thank you, Isha. It's been a pleasure. And um, anybody watching, you're welcome to reach out to me with any questions um, at UMass. It's ncarrero at umass.edu. Uh, feel free to reach out. Thank you for having me today.